Locked on Boston Bruins listeners know that I am a glass half full kind of guy when it comes to this team this season. And finally, the underlying numbers are coming home to roost as the Bruins are now 5-1 in 2022 after a 7-3 victory over the Washington Capitals on Monday evening. They're going to talk about last night's game as well as update the Eastern Conference power rankings on today's episode. So let's get into it. You're Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I am your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Tuesday, January 11th, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, so please do subscribe. Uh, Each new episode will be automatically added to your feed for you to download, listen, and enjoy. If you could also rate and review, that would be so very much appreciated. Uh, If you are on social media, you can follow the podcast at LockedNHLBruins on both Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, at Ian C. McLaren. Now, big story for the Boston Bruins early on this season was... Uh, slow start, an inability to beat top level teams, and some real question marks about some of the new faces that were brought into uh, the mix over the off season, and uh, yeah, just whether or not Don Sweeney made the right decisions and it back in the off season. Um, there was a very crazy schedule that had a lot of breaks in it for the Bruins. There were uh, the COVID breaks, a lot of distractions, Brad Marchand suspension, Jake DeBrusk trade request. And the Bruins ended 2021 with a pretty long break because of a COVID outbreak among the team. Turn the corner to 2022 and the Bruins are one of the top teams in the NHL since the holiday break. They're 5-1 here in 2022 after a 7-3 win over the Washington Capitals. Their only loss coming against Minnesota last week. Part of the reason why they are so rejuvenated is a decision by head coach Bruce Cassidy to bump uh, some players up and down the lineup. Craig Smith was bumped up to the first line to play with Brad Marchand and... um, Patrice Bergeron, David Pasternak placed on the second line with Eric Halla and Taylor Hall. And then the third line centered around Charlie Coyle, who had been up in the second line spot. The line of uh, Hall, Halla, and Pasternak has come alive in a big way over the past few games. Taylor Hall specifically Uh, has really broken out with two goals, six assists for eight points in the first six games of 2022. He trails only Brad Marchand for the team lead in points over that time. Uh, David Pasternak, who had been mired in a bit of a goal drought, uh, he has five goals over his past six games as well. After the game last night, Taylor Hall said he loves playing with Pasta. Last year, he said, getting to this team, getting a chance to play with him a little bit in practices and things like that. He's such a great player, a really good hockey sense, a real good way of getting open and staying open. Um, Hall had gotten off to a pretty slow start this season. Uh, He started the year with Coyle and Craig Smith, uh, had a very low shooting percentage, and he admitted that the 10-day break came at a good time. He said his game was okay, but it allowed him to take a breath, maybe just relax a little bit more, not put so much pressure on himself as he came back to play. Try and enjoy it a little bit more. Throughout the first part of the year, he felt like he was a little tight in games, wasn't able to show his true ability playing that way, 
So he tried to just relax a little bit and play with his line mates better. And certainly, uh, you know, I said last night after a haul and Pasternak converted on a, uh, odd man rush Hall to Pasternak. It probably doesn't really matter who's playing uh, center with that line. And uh, right now, those two guys are really clicking. It seems like Bruce Cassidy has really focused on kind of duos. Uh, so you have Marsha and Bergeron and then Smith. Uh, you have Halla, sorry, Hall, Pasternak, and Hall in the middle. Coyle had been there with DeBrusque, Felino. You know, that's kind of been uh fluctuating due to covid and due to uh injury to nick felino but um yeah the top two lines really are clicking at the moment now a couple big stories in this game last night first of all brad marchand's nose <laughs> got incredibly i don't even want to say dinged up but got ripped up thanks to nick dowd um Nesson broadcast really zoomed in on the repair job that was going on there. S moments after that incident, he assisted on a David Pasternak power play goal and then scored a power play goal of his own to erase an early 2 nothing lead for the Washington Capitals. Uh, those two goals by the Capitals came off some misplays by the defense. Uh, the second one particularly... A uh, pretty egregious turnover by Matt Grizzlick, who passed the puck out into the front of the net, and it was gobbled up by Connor Sheary, who deposited it past Linus Allmark. From that point on, however, Matt Grizzlick earned Big Bear of the Night honors by recording one goal and four assists, becoming just the um, fifth defenseman in franchise history to record five points in a game the first since Ray Bork back in 1994 and the first across the NHL this season, not Kale McCarr, not Adam Fox. It's Matt Grizzlick. Uh, he had eight points in 31 previous games, five points in one game tonight. He said, as it's happening, you just kind of shake your head, just laughing during the game. Felt good about his game most of the year, but points have been hard to come by. I know this personally, as I have him on my fantasy team, uh, two of them, actually. Um, he said it's something he didn't really worry about. At the same time, his job is to add in offensively. It's frustrating when you don't see the puck go in the net when you're on the ice. And uh, he just had to laugh because everything did, in fact, fall in place. So big bear of the night goes to Grizzlick in a big way in this one. A couple negatives from this game. First of all, Derek Forbort and Connor Clifton were placed in COVID-19 protocol uh, on Monday afternoon, uh, meaning uh, Yerho Vakaninen had to continue playing. He has been pretty good so far, to be honest. John Moore had to come in, and Charlie McAvoy made his return. So we'll have to see how long uh, those two guys are out uh, in protocols. Nick Foligno missed this game. He's going to have an, an MRI uh, when the team returns to Boston, which they are – back in there now and then Trent Frederick missed the third period with an upper body injury uh Jake DeBrusque remained out with COVID Carson Kuhlman came in uh and uh Anton Bleed hit the back of the net again in this one actually no he had a uh, a couple assists in this game um to yeah just continue to impress in a fourth line role so Overall, a very encouraging game for the Boston Bruins. Bruce Cassidy, again, his decision to mix things up has really saved the Bruins season at the moment, perhaps even his job, uh, as things were not looking good. But as I was saying, through the beginning part of the season, it takes time for all these new faces to get used to each other. They did not find a groove early on because of the crazy schedule. And uh, it just take some time for things to come together. A huge amount of roster turnover for the Boston Bruins and things are finally falling into place. And we'll update the um, Eastern Conference power rankings here in a moment. But first, a word about Primal Origin Oils. If you have a beard, you need to get Primal. Maybe you're the person who's never considered the benefits of treating your beard with product. 
Primal Origin oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and with low impact on the planet. Uh, Primal Origin Oils makes bombs, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel in beard products available. They're all fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. We know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients and the feel in beard to other products you've used. We promise you'll see and feel the difference. Remember to use promo code locked on to get 20% off at primaloriginoils.com. That's promo code locked on at checkout at primaloriginoils.com. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms and as well as uh, YouTube. So please do hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. Now, usually on Tuesdays, I update the Atlantic Division Power Rankings. I've kind of changed that up over the last week or so because of the fact that the Eastern Conference um, playoff picture kind of eliminates several of the Atlantic Division teams that we don't really need to worry about. Three teams in the conference that are under 400 when it comes to point percentage. Buffalo Sabres, Ottawa Senators, Montreal Canadiens, well out of the playoff picture. We can probably add the teams that are under 500 as well. The uh, Philadelphia Flyers, the New York Islanders, and the New Jersey Devils, 11th, uh, 12th, and 13th when it comes to point percentage. In 9th and 10th, there are two teams who are right at 500 in terms of point percentage, the Detroit Red Wings and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, Both of them have very negative goal differentials, Detroit at minus 23, Columbus at minus 12. If you look at the wild card picture at the moment, the Bruins are in the second wild card spot. They're five points back of the Pittsburgh Penguins with Three, or sorry, two games in hand at the moment. Uh, in the Eastern Conference, or sorry, the Atlantic Division, the Bruins are seven points back of the Maple Leafs for third with uh, just one game in hand. They're 11 points back of Tampa with five games in hand. So the Bruins right now well entrenched in the eighth spot in the Eastern Conference. That's even... Uh, in light of this recent, you know, five and one stretch to begin 2022. And it's going to take a lot more work for them to rise up in the standings. If they're going to catch Pittsburgh for the first wild card spot, or if they're going to move into the top three in the Atlantic division, which could be a bit of a tough task. If you remember the playoff format, um, the, Number one team in the conference plays the second wildcard team, and then the other division leader will take on the first wildcard team. So at the moment, the Bruins would be in line to take on the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. Boston in eighth place at the moment with a 625 point percentage, plus 15 goal differential. Not the lowest among all playoff teams. They have a better goal differential than Tampa Bay and the Rangers. Uh, Carolina clearly in first at the moment, 758 point percentage, plus 42 goal differential. The Panthers, 729 point percentage, plus 31 goal differential. And then you have Toronto in third at uh, 712 point percentage, plus 29 goal differential. Uh, Tampa in fourth, the Rangers in fifth, the Capitals in sixth. Uh, They are tied in point percentage with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Penguins have three games in hand on them. They have a plus six, uh, sorry, a 662 point percentage tied with the the Penguins. So there could be some movement between those two teams. But if you look at the underlying numbers, the Bruins have put up elite numbers all season long. Right now, five-on-five play where the majority of hockey games are played. The Bruins are third in the East when it comes to shot attempt differential 
53.51 uh, in their favor behind Florida and Carolina. Uh, Calgary is in third overall, uh, first in the West. When it comes to shot differential, the Bruins are first in the NHL, a 56.5% advantage in their favor. If you look at high danger chance differential, the Bruins are second in the NHL behind only the Tampa Bay Lightning, um, which is amazing. Now, the big knock on the Bruins so far, not knock per se, but their big weakness has been uh, shooting percentage at five on five. They used to be dead last in the NHL. They have risen a bit now. They have a 7.12 um, shooting percentage at five on five. Even with this great outbreak over the last few games, they're still 26th in the NHL, but they're getting secondary scoring in a huge way at the moment. They've scored 28 goals since the turn of the calendar. 16 different goal scorers for the Boston Bruins, uh, which is incredible. So they're getting that secondary scoring. They're getting it at five on five. And it was only a matter of time that they would start to get uh, more results five on five based on their, you know, high end shot differentials, their high end shot attempt differentials, their high end um, high danger chance differentials you saw a lot of people pointing to the fact that they were last in high danger chances but that was uh totals and that was based on the fact that they had played so few games if you look at on average game in game out they are generating more high danger chances than the opposition so in those underlying numbers are top five top three sometimes tops in the nhl and Based on recent trends, they are clearly uh, capitalizing on that. They still have a lot of way to go in terms of making up ground in the Eastern Conference and getting out of that um, second wildcard spot. It might be very challenging to get into a top three spot in the Eastern Conference, or sorry, in the Atlantic Division because those three teams are so good. Uh, but if they continue to play as they have been, it will be very difficult uh, for them to be beat uh, in the first round. They might not be just a one and done. Uh, can they get out of the second round? Can they make it past the third round? Who knows? It all depends on if Duke is back in the mix, how well he can play. It all depends on... Uh, if they make any additions at the trade deadline, there's still a lot of factors in play, but at the moment we're seeing what this team is capable of and they beat the Tampa Bay lightning in convincing fashion. They beat Washington in convincing fashion. Uh, there is something there. And again, like I said, off the top, I've been a glass half full guy throughout the season based on those underlying numbers via natural stat trick. If you want to check them up yourselves and, um, yeah, it just took some time for the guys to to gel. Uh, it took some time for Linus Allmark to get acclimated to the system, um, for these new faces to come in. There's been some fluctuation on the blue line with injuries, and uh, hopefully they can keep things going and they'll have a good chance to do so as they have a couple lesser opponents in Montreal and Philadelphia coming up here on Wednesday and Thursday night. Before we get to some news and notes from around the NHL, the NFL playoffs are upon us, and there's nowhere better for you to make your wagers than at Bet Online. It's your number one spot for all sports wagering action in 2022. They have a new updated desktop and mobile website, so you can sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code LOCKED ON to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers at Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, I wanted to revisit a story that um, I mentioned a few days ago, and that was David Krejci uh, lamenting the fact that he 
did not have more time played with David Pasternak. Of course, Krejci uh, departed this past offseason for his native Czech Republic. And uh, he was quoted last week as, obviously, he's been watching Bruins games. He sees Pasternak on the second line. He was wondering, you know, why Coach Cassidy rarely let the two of them play together. Uh, Bruce Cassidy over the weekend said, you know, Sean Corrali has to play with Pasternak. Charlie Coyle has to play with Pasternak. Riley Nash in the past. Everybody wants to play with him. Uh, he said he understood Krejci's point of view. Didn't see him as much as he would have liked. But at that particular time, um, you know, over the last few years, Marshan Bergeron, Pasternak, arguably the best line in hockey. And there was no reason to switch that up. Um, Cassidy said, our team was going better offensively than it was two weeks ago when he made the decision. Uh, but he understands David's point of view. Why wouldn't he want to play with him? Um, he said, at the time, they felt Pasternak could drive a line no matter who his wingers were. And we saw some of that. Uh, there are differences as far as why they made the switch now versus years ago. He respects Krejci's opinion. He was a great Bruin. We're doing what we have to do for the team now, and hopefully it's the right decision, and it's it's paying off very well. So, you know, in the past, um, David Krejci, he was kind of the center of the second line, and they didn't have the wingers to put around him, which is obviously a point of contention for Krejci, and rightfully so. Now they have the two elite wingers on the second line and it doesn't really matter who's playing in the middle because both Hall and Pasternak can drive things. And then you have Mer Marchand and Bergeron who can drive things up top. Uh, so it kind of makes sense at the moment to make this move. Now Pasternak, he said he didn't see uh, the article. He did say he liked to play with Krejci. Everybody knew that. He was just doing so good with Bergy and with Bergy and Marshy. It was hard to split them up, uh, but it was well known that he wanted to play with Krejci. He wanted to play with Pasternak, but uh, they're the players. Yeah, they were just given the players that they had for what Cassidy thought was best for the team. Um, and if you look at the numbers with Scott McLaughlin of WEEI did, Krejci's numbers were not significantly better when he had Pasternak. Um, and, you know, it's difficult to argue that Cassidy made a, a obvious mistake by keeping Pasternak on the top line, the best line out there. The idea at the time was Jake DeBrusque was uh, the kind of player who could play off um, – David Krejci, and he had been kind of boosted on that line uh, permanently before the acquisition of Taylor Hall. Um, you know, Krejci hasn't had or didn't have the best line mates since Lucic, Horton, uh, Aginla, and uh, DeBrusque did play that role early on. His production fell off, and then once Taylor Hall came in, it, uh, it really – came together and that's why people thought Krejci might come back for at least one more season but alas it, it didn't happen and I can see why he wanted to play with Pasta but I can also see Cassidy's point of view that why break up the best line in the NHL and also why um, why not give Krejci the ability to continue to drive play with whoever he was playing with as he has in the past. Uh, now, one of the big stories in the NHL right now is Evander Kane. Uh, his contract was terminated by the San Jose Sharks. Uh, his agent, Dan Milstein, indicated there's a number of teams that have expressed interest, uh, including the uh, Edmonton Oilers, the Carolina Hurricanes, I believe. Uh, Gord Miller of TSN tweeted he's heard Kane could have a contract with a new team by the end of the week. Um, I haven't heard the Bruins really being in the mix and uh, that's just as well actually because I would not be a fan of adding uh, him into the Bruins mix at the moment uh, 
They have a strong leadership core. If any team could absorb, uh, you know, what he brings, it could be the Bruins, but I don't want them to, to necessarily take that risk. Um, so yeah, that's just my two cents on that situation. What else is going on around the NHL? Some more postponements due to COVID. I believe the Flyers Hurricanes game tonight was postponed. Um, and, um, speaking of Kane, just to go back to that, the NHLPA has filed a grievance on his behalf, not wanting to walk away from the whole 28 or $22 million that he was owed. Uh, so perhaps he can recoup some of that money while also signing with a new team. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Thank you so much for tuning in. A very fun and encouraging win last night for the Bruins. And again, hopefully they can keep it going this week against uh, Montreal and Philly. Both of those teams have had COVID issues as of late, so hopefully those games aren't postponed. And um, if they are, if you're looking for something to watch, can't recommend Dope Sick enough. Uh very good show about the opioid crisis in the States, uh, Oxycontin, uh, kind of a, uh, both a fictional, but also true life look at that situation. Uh, very good show. We might finish that off tonight, hoping to catch season two premiere of righteous gemstones as well. So yeah, hope you're all having a good week. Bessie is making an appearance on the podcast. Say hi, Bessie. Hello. And, uh, We'll be back tomorrow with a fresh episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.